What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to show an example of how to connect SQL with Python, both read and write. So we're going to take some data, input it into SQL, then send that data into Python. Here we're going to run a machine learning model, get some results and some predictions, and then save the predictions back in SQL. We are not going to focus on the machine learning model, but we are going to focus mostly on the automation phase and how to connect everything together. And before we jump into this video, let me just say that if you're new to my channel and you're passionate about data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and enabling notifications for my future videos. Right, the first thing you have to do is to make sure that the data you want to send into Python is already stored in SQL. So if you're lucky and you have the data stored already in a table, then you can skip this part. But if not, you're going to have to set up a process that picks the data up from a local folder from your PC and stores the data in SQL. If you are completely new in SQL and you don't have a server and a database, then I'm going to have a link in the description of a video that I explain how to download SQL, set up a new server, set up a new database and generally set all your environment up for this video. Right, step one is to connect to our database, which is the data 360YP. Step two is to create an empty table, which is what I do over here. So I say create table, then I specify all the column names I'm gonna need. So in this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight column names, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because I do have values in these two columns. You just don't see them right now. So I specify the column names as I do over here. And the next bit is that I do a bulk insert into this table and I take the data from and in the from I need to specify the location. So if I go in the folder where this file is saved, which is uh, which one, this one over here, all I have to do is click over here, copy this string, which is basically the path, paste it over here, and at the end of the path, we need to specify the name of the file and the type of the file. So the name of my file is this one over here, and at the end, I say .csv because it's a CSV file. Additionally, we need to specify the format into brackets over here. So if I run all this bit now, it's actually going to fail because I have the file open, but let's test it. You see it failed. If I close this file, then I run it again. It's going to work fine. And then if I select everything from my table, which is this one over here, I can see that I have brought all my data into SQL from the Excel file location that is saved. The reason I have this code at the top is basically saying that if the table exists, then I want to drop this table. So every time I run this, it's actually going to drop the table that exists over here. What's the name of the table? Raw data GDP, which is this one over here. It's going to drop it and then it's going to recreate it with the new data. The reason we do this is that every week that we're going to have new data in that Excel file, we actually want to delete all the old one and bring all the new one in with the new rows at the end. And the last step over here, if I want to fully automate this, is to create a store procedure that runs every day or every week or every month. So every day that we have new data, SQL is going to run itself and it's going to update the data over here. If you want a tutorial on how to create store procedures, again, I'm going to have a link in the video description. Right, the next step is to head over into Python. And here, the first thing we have to do is to import or install the packages we're gonna need for this video. So at the top, I have some of the main ones and down here, I have Arima and some ML ones. So if you're missing any of these packages, all you have to do is PRP install and the package. And just to demonstrate this, I'm gonna PRP install this package down here, which is the one we need to create the ODBC connection between SQL and Python. So all you have to do is say PIP install and then the name of this package. 
and then it's going to start installing the packages as you can see my requirement is already satisfied because i already installed this if it throws you an error then you should probably try the dash dash user one before you install it just because maybe you don't have access so if i remove this now then i run the first bit and now we come down here where we have to load the data from sql into python so first thing you have to do is to create the connection so i say connect equals then podbc.connect and down here is where you're going to have to change things so first thing you have to specify the driver you're using so you can leave this one exactly the same as mine the second thing you will need to change is the server and to get your server you're going to have to go back in sql click over here and get the server name you see over here so we can copy this and paste it down here the next thing you have to do is to specify the database so to get the database again you can go back in your sql and you can get the database from here so data 360yp data 360yp and then you have to set the connection to trusted connection you can leave this code exactly the same this last bit next you have to specify the sql query you want to run so it's actually a query i'm missing the r over here so what i'm saying here is pd.read sql query and then into three quotations uh, make sure you use three over here you need to type in what the sql query you want to run so i want to select everything from this table and this table is actually the table we have just created which is this row data underscore gdp which is this one row data underscore gdp and then comma and then specify the connection which is the connection we have just created over here and the next thing we want to do is to visualize our data so what this query did actually is that it took the table from sql and it stored the table in a data frame in a pandas data frame and then if i run it quickly we can see that it brought back exactly the same table as the one we have in sql right the next thing you will do in a business scenario is that you will take this data and apply some sort of transformation on it whether it's data analytics or machine learning or anything you want to add or remove from this data which is why we brought it into a uh, python in the first place so what i do down here is that i take this data I limit the data first into only GDP per capita, and then I run a loop that goes through every single country, and it runs an ARIMA model and an auto ARIMA model. It plots the model, and then it saves the data into some pandas data frames. So as you can see down here is all the countries, and then what's their forecast for the next six years, of how their GDP per capita is going to be. Now, I'm not gonna focus on explaining how this model works because it's not the topic of this video, but I will have a video coming out soon that goes through time series models and explains them in more depth. So anyway, after we run our forecasting, it's gonna, you see now, it loops through every single country and it runs the ARIMA and auto ARIMA then we want to get our results, which is what I do next, which, which is actually the predictions or the forecasting and join them with the original data set. So what you see up until here flags is our original data set. So this exists into SQL. And what I've done is that I have added two new columns in the original data set. First one is the machine learning method because I've run both ARIMA and auto ARIMA. The second one is the forecasting value for the next seven years. So into the time over here, we're going to have time going ahead of the times we have in SQL. And it's going to also have the forecasting value per country. And the last bit we want to do now is to take this data frame and write it back into SQL. So back into our database. Right, going back into Python now to explain this last bit, all you have to do is copy all this code and paste it into your notebook. Make sure you have these two libraries installed, otherwise you can PIP install them as we've explained at the beginning of this video. 
make sure you have the correct server here which is basically going to be the same server as the one we specify at the top make sure you have the same database as the one we've specified at the top another note here is that maybe you want to write this data back into a different database so make sure you specify the database you want to write your data in actually but in most of the cases it's going to be the same database as the database you take the data from leave the trusted connection as yes leave this code exactly the same as you see it and in the last piece of code you're going to need to change this combined gdp into your final table just because my final table is combined underscore gdp i take this table this data frame i paste it down here as a dot to sql then i need to specify the name of the new sql table then the schema you can leave the schema as dbo in connection we have this um, engine over here so leave it as it is and down here i have if exist equals replace so what this means is that each time i run this code if the table exists in sql it's going to drop the table and replace the table and then we go back into sql and we refresh our database again we should have this table there there we go and if i want to select everything from this table just to view it is this one over here so you can see we have the two new columns the machine learning methods and the forecast and if we want to check that we do have forecasting values i'm just going to select everything where forecast is not zero so we can see all the forecast values for all the times or years going ahead in a typical business scenario now the next step would have been to connect this data this output we have the predictions or the forecasting with the data visualization tool then create a dashboard that is going to have visuals about the countries and the forecast of the countries and then deploy that into the wider business so everyone has access and everyone can see your predictions However, because this is not the topic of this video, I'm going to stop this video here and I'm going to do what I have just explained in another video in the future. Right, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video and I'm going to see you in the next video.